I mean, you know, SegWit was controversial. You're saying there's not a lot of those that are, are likely to. We did just have a, a large uh, upgrade soft fork that was not uh, especially controversial, Taproot. Um, and so I'm wondering if, if you guys, just for people watching that are unfamiliar, maybe just touch on what that enabled for us and, uh, and, and where that can go and, and things that are still needed beyond that that could uh, be implemented later. But start with, what, what did Taproot do for us? Well, for me, I, I think it gave us a lot more privacy. Uh, so you, you have this mass syntax tree, and you have, you, you have the single key unlock. on. Uh, so you have the key spend and the, um, and the script spend. And you, you, uh, those were two different types of addresses all throughout Bitcoin's history up until Taproot. So you had the pay to pub key hash addresses, the addresses that start with a one, pay to script hash addresses, which are the addresses that start with a three. Um, even within SegWit, there was the BEC32 addresses that were shorter and then the BEC32 addresses that were longer. One was pay to witness pub key hash, the other one was pay to witness script hash. You've combined those, so essentially you can't tell which one is, and in fact, all taproot uh, spends can, can be uh, one or the other, and you have the option of both, and there's no real penalty that you're paying for that. Um, and that, that gives you additional privacy, but also you have this tap tree, so you, you, you can make some very, very complicated scripts or like have many, many different conditions under which you can unlock it, and many of them can be hidden behind uh, you know, many, um, you know, very deep in the mass tree and so on, so you know, depending on the probability of their execution. Um, and that, th this gives us a lot more flexibility in sort of how we spend, uh, you know, have backups to our funds and stuff, stuff like that, most of which hasn't really been you know, adopted by wallets and so on. So I, I look forward to sort of seeing a lot of that. Um, but I, I would say that the main benefit is that we, we've sort of upgraded the security for each user. So you, you have this ability to go and back up your wallet to you know, two of three of this and four or five of this and you know, even like um, have you know, uh, public companies or something that you know, publish their public key and ha have it possible for them to unlock it and they don't even know that they hold those keys, right? Like th those are some really cool things that we can have within Taproot. Um, you know, so I, I see it as like a beneficial software, but to go back a little bit to, you know, uh, you know what, what, uh, what Jeremy said, and I think he's absolutely right on this, you know, the, the process for SegWit and Taproot, I, I really don't think you can have generalized lessons. And I see that kind of as a feature, not a bug, right? Like, it is frustrating for these guys, obviously, <laughs> to, you know, have to go and try to find, okay, how do I get consensus? And, you know, Paul described it as Kafka-esque or whatever. It's like, how do, how do I convince? Well, you know, it, if we had, like, a strict process or something, that I, I think that would imply that we have a permanent governance model or something, right? Like, and that's exactly what we don't want. This is a decentralized network. Yeah. And in a decentralized network, what you need to do is convince the people that are part of that decentralized network. Mm -hmm. And there are more people coming in and out of this decentralized network all the time. So we should expect the sort of process by which we add uh, softworks to be different each time because we have more constituents, we have more use cases, we have different features, different thing, uh, things that are happening, and in a sense, like, each, each soft fork has to be different because you have different people using it, and that's a good thing. I, I don't see that as a bad thing. 